to where students go in, in the philosophy program, uh, the standard ones would be uh, ideally they'd love philosophy, they want to teach in it, uh, more of them want to teach it than actually get that far because there aren't a whole lot of jobs in it anymore, but we've had a number of professors that actually made it through that whole uh, curriculum, so to speak. And uh, so that's like winning the brass ring. That's what all the students would love to do. But of course, we've got to tell them, no, you, you love philosophy, but you got to do it on your own the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to do it like us to get paid for it. But that's a sign of how much they love it. But it's also kind of the curse of philosophy because it's very hard to keep doing this thing uh, and get paid for it. So what it, what it leads to if you're worried about a job is quite often lawyers. Uh, it, it probably gives you the best background to get a good uh, LSAT score. Uh, it's of all the all the different disciplines. If in terms of the highest LSAT score averages, it's philosophy and physics as the top of the list. So if you're trying to keep your parents happy, tell you tell them why you want a philosophy major. That's the sort of thing you tell them and follow them off with. But uh, the the other thing is um, uh, computer programmers and teaching in high schools. A lot of English uh, professors will come with philosophy uh, degrees and then they'll go teach at a parochial high school or a public high school uh, because there's just something about philosophy as close as they can get to it even if they're teaching English or history that's better than nothing and then of course we have plenty of baristas there's a lot of graduates that are now working at Starbucks and places of that sort uh, but that's with any major that basically what you're seeing here is the philosophy major ultimately is useless that's not an insult that's a compliment because useless things are the best things in life they're the things you do for free and so here you have four years you could do something for free because you love it and then the rest of your life you're going to be doing things that you have to be paid for it because you'd never do it for free so why do you major in philosophy you want to have a taste of what it is to really be free for four years of your life and then you take that freedom with you inside of you while you're being essentially a slave and a lot of other jobs are very practical very useful, but they aren't something you do for free. So it's carving out that inner freedom that you need to take with you when you leave here. But you won't get paid for it. But who cares? This is why you want to get paid so you can do things for free. So that's the ultimate pitch for the uselessness of a philosophy major. Thank you, Professor Downey. That's very fascinating to hear about um, the LSAT scores and how it's, you would think, you know, political science students or politics students, um, but to think that it's uh, philosophy and physics students at the top. I don't know if philosophy generates the high scores or if you can get a high score anyway, you're drawn to philosophy. Hmm. It's hard to know whether it's the cause or result of the philosophy major. Hmm. But either way, that, that means your peers in the philosophy are going to be drawn to it and they're going to be like-minded. People that want to do philosophy are the kind of students you want to be around. They're the, one, they're the ones you want to make friends with and stay in touch with the rest of your life. So it's kind of a self-selecting pool. So you're likely to encounter the people you most want to know in the philosophy major and be friends with.